good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar on uh, SEO in depth. Uh, my name is Sam and I look after online marketing and web design at Net Registry. Uh, before I start the webinar, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me. Thanks, David. Okay, um, we're going to be covering. We're going to be covering a lot in the next uh, sixty minutes. So, if something kind of goes uh, about uh, your understanding or it gets too technical, uh, you can always get in touch with me after the webinar, and I'm happy to explain to you what I actually meant. So let's uh, start with the webinar now. Uh, let's look at what the agenda we're going to cover today. So what we're going to be looking at is purely on you know what has happened with SEO, uh, what are the new trends with search engine optimization in 2000 level, um, you know what's social SEO and what are the things that you got to do from a search engine point of view. And also we're going to be looking at some of the tools that you can use to optimize your website on your own. Now, before I start the um, the webinar, I just want to have a quick understanding about um, how many of you all actually understand, um, you know, search engine optimization, or how many of you all actually do uh, search engine optimization on your own. So I'm just gonna open up a poll to see uh, what to where do you guys fit into so that I make sure that I'm not getting too technical and I'm also uh, you know being a bit more specific to what you would be after okay great uh, looks like we've got a very good um, a mixed bag of people out here, people with having some knowledge, no knowledge, and someone who's doing SEO on the on their own. Okay, so let's let's go one step back and try to understand, you know, what has happened in the uh, search engine optimization industry as such. Okay, so if you look at back in you know in 2001, uh, there were a lot of different search engines, right? Google was not the only one. Uh, the other search engines which were much more popular were Yahoo, Netscape, uh, Alta Vista, and so on. So there were a lot of different different search engines, and most of these search engines had their own data. So they would collect information and build up their database. So depending upon which search engine you go to you would get different kind of information and so on and a lot of times you know you would go on to something like Yahoo search for something and it'll take you five results to get a pro proper answer and even at that time you know, things are very simple you know if you want to be found on the first page of Google it was really simple all you had to do is make sure that you're using a lot of those keywords on all across your website putting it on anchor text and once you've done that you know you practically were on the first page of Google things was really very simple you know um, but as time went on you know things kind of changed and so on so normally you know when you look at um, search engine you know 10 years back uh, it was quite simple you know with uh, a lot of uh, results and only the results came up um, based on what information was there on the page of the website so most companies or most website owners would actually go and stuff keywords on the website on their meta tags and they were practically on the first page of search results and at that point of time, as SEO was getting in slightly uh, developed, uh, there were three factors that actually made websites rank higher. You know, they were mainly around uh, making sure that uh, you've got <clears throat> a lot of uh, the, the keyword research you've done was specific. You had keywords in practically all places, like your meta keyword tag, your meta description, your page title, and all the stuff. And then slowly there were elements of link building. You know, you would have seen a lot of pages or websites which used to have a link exchange program. 
and things were much much easier in the past as we moved on you know then there were things like you know companies selling one way links to your websites and so on so you could go and buy links from other websites and uh, moment you get those links bang you're on the first page of Google you know as we moved on towards further on to in around 2008 things kind of changed a bit uh, Google start getting you know more and more popular all the other search engines kind of started phasing off so Google started getting more and more obvious across other search engines so by 2008 it was mainly you know Google Yahoo a bit of you know Bing or Microsoft MSN ask and so on all the other players Alta Vista and all practically died off so that's where we've seen Google picking up right from 2008 where they started getting more and more attention the biggest advantage Google, the reason why Google was successful is because Google had a lot of information which was very re relevant to what people were searching for. But again, in 2000, you know, 2008, things didn't change much, but the only thing is that there were more importance given to certain factors like keywords on domain name, uh, you know, having um, websites, uh, linking back to your website, uh, getting links from one way, uh, one way links from other websites. There were a lot of talk about things like page rank, how popular your website is, and so on. So from 2001 to 2008, uh, it didn't change much. You know, it just went on. The only thing is that uh, more and more websites started coming up on search results, and uh, businesses slowly started understanding that they need to be found on Google. The, the reason I'm going through this process is, you know, for you all to understand as to how complex things have become now. You know, in 2011 and so on. So in 2011, you know, a lot has changed, you know. In fact, from a, a search engine point of view, I guess uh, it's a whole new world, you know. Um, you have so many different factors. You've got so many companies trying to sell you online marketing and uh, so many businesses totally relying on their website. So nowadays, you know, you hardly see results like the way it used to be a couple of uh, years back, you know, because right now, the results include a lot of things you know you you get real time informations you know you could get if you're looking at something very specific you get uh, you know uh, sub listings for a specific domain name and so on and because of the the way google has changed the way we surf on the internet has also changed a lot so we can get more specific information depending upon what we're searching for so Nowadays, the way the search results come up, they're totally different. So you could either have something like this, or if you're searching and doing a product research, you automatically can straight away see prices, uh, you know, reviews for the product on the main page listing itself. Or you know, if you're looking for some some kind of a service which is location based, then you've got things like Google Maps coming up. And not only that, you know, with Google Maps now, you have things like, uh, you know, company reviews, ratings, and so on. So the information that comes to us from search engines has changed a lot. And I think uh, we ourselves have learned to use search engines much better than what we used to, you know, a couple of years back. And not only you know you get nowadays uh, you know text-based results, you actually get a lot of information. You know you get uh, res when you look at search results, sometimes you get results from blogs, from video sites, from uh, listing sites, from review sites, and so on. So it's getting more and more uh, difficult to be ranking highly on search engines, mainly because there are so m so many different formats of information there on the search engines that the first page of Google is getting extremely populated with different kinds of information. We also have changed the way we search information. We not only search today for simply for text, we search for information based on video, images, and uh, moving forward, you know, you could actually use audio search to get results. So things are getting more and more difficult 
from a search engine point of view you know and I think that's that's the biggest problem today is that one is that um, we're going towards what you call as personalized results now Google is keeping track about your you know your history as to what you search for and so on so in the near future you know every person who goes on to Google might get a personalized set of results so the first three results might be different for each and every person because Google knows that if you are a person always looking out for products which uh, are price conscious then they will try to give you results to suit that requirement what you have to understand is that just like everyone is trying to be on the first page of Google Google itself has been facing a lot of competition nowadays Google doesn't have competition only from search engines like Yahoo or Bing it's actually getting competition from uh, websites like Facebook Twitter and so on because the traffic that they used to get in the past you know the last two three years is now going to these different platforms and not only that Google itself has changed a lot like for example you know nowadays you don't even need to write type the whole thing the moment you type in the first word or second word you actually get a list of results which makes the entire optimization process much more difficult uh, I mean spelling mistakes you know doesn't really make any difference now because Google is too smart enough to pick up and give you the right kind of information so what you're going to see is that as you move forward you know Google keeps on changing you know you'll be surprised that in a year Google makes at least around 500 changes to its algorithm now out of that uh, you know some of them are a big changes some of them are very small changes but any kind of major change on algorithm will affect your search results so it's not about you know how being found on the f search engines and being number one you have to constantly work towards to make sure that any changes that Google does doesn't bring down your search results because the moment you drop down from your first page listing it's a bigger challenge to come back out there because your competition is trying the level best to come out there it's getting and it's getting more and more complex and the biggest problem today is that Google doesn't come out in the open and say if you do this you'll be in the first page of Google so what I'm trying to do today is talk to you about what are the different factors you know that are affecting search results now you may not be able to implement all of them but at least uh, if there's something which is within your control I think you should implement them so we've kind of covered our journey from 2001 to 2011 so let's look at you know what happens in 2011 now there is an organization called as SEO Moz which is more of an association of SEO experts worldwide so what happens is that there's some interesting information that you know all of the SEO experts share within the community for example you know the importance for certain factors so if you look at this graph and this is from you know, information shared across SEO experts worldwide you know we've seen a big difference in where Google is giving importance to so not only Google gives importance to things like you know your keywords on your domain name it also looks at various other factors it looks at you know how much of authority you have on a domain level how much of authority you have on a page level uh, how much of uh, you know uh, social metrics that means how much of links you're getting back from other websites and so on so there's a lot of factors that are actually affecting it now there are a lot of SEO companies in the local market who actually try to you know sell you an SEO plan and talk about some of the th things that used to work in the past but frankly speaking that doesn't work anymore you know you have to do you know uh, basically go across various things now when you talk about authority um, I guess Douglas uh, has got a question what does authority mean authority means basically you know uh, what is the value of a specific product you know who's going to give much more value to it so uh, when you look at a from a, from a search engine point of view you know um, it's all about understanding okay if you get a backlink from let's say cnn.com.au or sydneymorningherald.com.au that's an authority website Google trusts that website that website is quite reputable so Google starts giving those inf you know takes importance to all those kind of factors 
Now these are some of the factors that you look at. So let's look at you know these factors much more in a brighter uh, way. So to start with, you know, you got to make sure that the information that you are sharing or putting on your website is not purely for a search engine point of view. It also has to be, uh, you know, worthwhile for the user. Sometimes, you know, most businesses go overboard and they do so much of optimization that the text on the website doesn't make any sense. Okay. So imagine you take all the efforts of being on the first page of Google. Someone clicks on your result and then when they read the first paragraph on your website, it's so boring that they hit the back button and they go somewhere else. So when you're putting things on your website, make sure that uh, the the content on your website is actually something people like and they're they're happy to share that with others it's a great thing to have a lot of resources on your website it could be information based resources it could be frequently asked questions and so on the other thing also important is the the usability of websites a lot of times uh, you know you go to a website and then you find it extremely difficult to navigate through the website. Uh, we, we face the same problem with net registry. We realize that on an average, on a daily uh, basis, at least 100 people who go to a website, uh, they start, they select a domain name, they put that in the shopping basket, but they do not complete the transaction. So we've, we've kind of found a way how to capture that information and we've started going back to these customers and asking them, you know, what made you not complete the transaction? And what was interesting is that you know almost 50 percent of them wanted to buy but for some reason they got confused with what is the difference between a park domain or you know what's a free trial so they didn't know what it was so they felt that rather than taking and and making a purchase they would like to go further back into some other website or go back to google search about what you know the entire process is so you got to make sure that your website uh, design is pretty user friendly and more importantly you know whatever information you put on your website make sure that you're not duplicating it a lot of times you know sometimes you tend to put so much of content across you know your website that the information is getting you know practically duplicated on different sections of your website two reasons one is no one likes to reach this read the same content again and secondly from a search engine point of view if a search engine spider visits your website and it comes to some parts of part of information which is already scanned earlier it's going to ignore that section of your website the other and the most important thing is that you got to make sure that uh, your entire whether it's an e-commerce store or whether it's an information based website you got to make it easier for someone to reach the end point or the destination so if you're trying to get someone to fill an inquiry form don't make them go to a couple of steps don't ask them too many questions if you are selling a product online make sure that you're not forcing them to set up an account or asking them information which is you know going to increase the time that they need to spend on your website and finally the most important thing is that you got to do the right kind of keyword research I'm going to talk about keyword research a bit more detail in the other slides because a lot of times we do keyword research using the wrong kind of tools. Okay, so let's let's have a look at further look at what are the factors that used to work in the past and don't work right now. Uh, one of the most uh, popular factors in the past used to be you know keywords on the domain name now this used to work very well you know two three years back or even last year where if someone had a domain name which said mortgagebroker.com.au that was a very important factor from Google's point of view but the problem with Google is the moment Google understands that people are or you know website owners are trying to manipulate Google's algorithm they stop giving importance to it. So we've seen uh, in the last couple of months that uh, there's a drop in the importance to keywords and a domain name. Now, similarly, uh, things like you know putting a lot of anchor text on external links. It used to work in the past, you know, where if if someone is actually linking back to you, you know, they will write a very nice description about your business and link back to you. It had a lot of importance. That importance is fading off. Similarly, there are other factors. But what's increasing 
you know is the the social signals that means uh, you know getting uh, traffic from social sites like Facebook Twitter and so on now unfortunately you know Google understands that uh, people spend a lot of time on social media if you look at business how it operates you know most businesses are successful because most of their traffic comes from or most of the business comes from word of mouth today social media is a new word of mouth so uh, there are a lot of stats which clearly show that uh, you know most people believe they are friends or family when it comes to getting recommendation has has compared to getting recommendation from an advertiser um, I'd, I'm, in the next presentation when I talk about social media specifically you know I will share some of uh, the stats which really clearly show the importance of why the social media stuff is adding value onto your search engine optimization strategy I'm not sure how many of you all actually use social media but whether you like it or not you'll be forced to use that because that's adding a lot of value Google has come out in the open and explained that yes they look at social media as one of the factors so any traffic you get from Twitter or any of the social media platform that is going to influence your search engine results as well so these are some of the factors which we feel is going to grow in the next uh, couple of months and years to come so you have to focus on you know click through rate you know what's your bounce rate how many people land onto your website and they leave from your website all that information is what Google is going to look at while ranking your websites because if Google realizes that most people come into your website leave from the home page they know that the user experience is bad so if you do not fix your bounce rate you're going to affect your search engine ranking as well I hope I'm not getting too technical uh, I'll try to keep it as basic as possible um, now these are some of the factors that uh, which always worked in the past now they are slowly losing importance things like you know having the right kind of title tag it works but doesn't have so much of effect it used to a couple of years back you know so these are some of the factors which two years back were the only things an SEO person would look at nowadays those factors are slowly losing their importance and as I said earlier you know there are close to around 200 factors you can't really do all of them but I think it's good to understand that which are the top 20 factors you should consider rather than trying to do everything across and some of these factors are within your control some which are not within your control From, from a social media point of view, again, you, what you'll see is that most SEO experts feel that, you know, one of the things that will add a lot of value is things like uh, Facebook shares, Facebook likes, comments, that are adding value onto search engine results. Google themselves today display uh, Twitter results on their search options. So if you actually go to Google search for something, on the left hand side there's an option which says search for real time which is nothing but anything that's happening with regards to that keyword on the Twitter platform and you will see today that social media is playing a big role across all organizations whether it is small or big uh, uh, if you look at today's news you know um, Contest got the entire social media strategy yesterday totally wrong where they went to do the right thing and try to you know build up a brand but it actually had a negative impact so I mean what you would learn from Contest's experience is that you know you have to watch the social media platform you need to understand your customers you can't simply go and offer them something not knowing what they feel about you if the the sentiments about your business is very negative okay there's no way you can make it positive by just throwing things at them okay now Google has done quite a lot of change in the last couple of months and some of the things which we feel are affecting and that things you got to watch out from a website point of view one is definitely you know is that do not use someone else's content 
because Google doesn't have any doesn't give any importance to you know duplicate content. Make sure that the information that you put on your website is meant for your users and they will benefit from it. It's quite simple, you know, if you share some information about your industry, whether it is something that, you know, some tips of how you do or whatever it is, the person who lands up on your website, if they find that information interesting, they're more likely to share that with ten of the other friends or who would be looking at a similar service. So what is happening is that by giving good information on your website, you're automatically getting, you know, sent across to other people who might be interested. I mean that's that's practically free traffic coming your way. The other thing also with regards to uh, keywords, you know, you've got to make sure that you have the right kind of keyword strategy because there are different keywords. There are keywords which will convert. There are keywords which are what we call as long tail keywords which will help you build up a, a poten potential customer base or a pipeline. So you've got to make sure that you know you're using the right keyword strategy. So you can't just have one single keyword strategy for all your different platforms. So you've got to look at that. Some of the things that a lot of people miss out on are things like you know uh, you tend to just leave out some of the meta titles and description now it's not a huge factor but that are one of the factors still it has got some kind of you know information across similar with regards to you know um, taking content from other websites make Make sure that the the information you're taking from other website is not which is there across 50 other websites, because then it doesn't add any value. If you're finding, if you're doing some research, make sure that you're not copying up information which is there on other 500 other websites, and you know, just as an add value. What also is important is to constantly watch your Google Analytics. Now, Google Analytics, for example, now give you much more information than what it used to 12 months back. In fact, uh, the latest version of Google Analytics today also helps you track uh, real-time tracking of who's actually on your website. It allows you to analyze traffic based on what kind of, you know, where it's coming from. Because you need to understand you know what's which part of your marketing strategy is working whether it's Google AdWords whether it is the organic traffic whether it is your social media platform whether it is directories and so on the other important thing also is it may not be relevant to you but some websites have got a lot of banners on the website now what these websites tend to uh, forget is that if someone is coming to your website, you're spending some money to drive people to your website or some time. Imagine someone lands up on your website and you've got a lot of banners. So someone comes to your website, clicks on the banner, they've gone away from your website. There's hardly any chance they're going to come back to you. So if you're looking at making money out of banners, you know, uh, banner advertisement, you know, think about the cost that you're spending to actually get people onto your website and it may not really you know be worthwhile so Google looks at all those factors because end of the day what Google looks at is if Google sends someone to your website you know would it be a positive experience for the person or would it be a negative experience so all these factors will actually add up to that okay let me just do a bit of a check to see um, is my voice Still clear enough? Can everyone hear me? Okay, wonderful. And uh, have I started getting a bit too technical or is it okay? Okay, wonderful. Okay. So if you look at the new if you look at the new SEO service, uh, the process is that uh, it's it's a mix and match of uh, things. Not only the the normal search and optimization that you do, but you also need to have your strategy around. You know, how do you what do you do with your Facebook presence? What do you do with you know YouTube? What do you do with LinkedIn and all and all those kind of stuff? So you have to understand that um, your website is not only the initial source of lead generation okay people come to your website when they want to buy a service so they come during a research mode a lot of customers would come to your website after they bought their product 
Okay, now they would come back either to leave feedback about the product, the service. So if you feel that your customer service is really good, then those feedbacks will only help you get more business. Okay. A lot of times people come back to you because they bought a product, they are stuck with support, they want to go and find there is there more information. So it it doesn't stop by just you know getting in front of the customer during the buying process. Okay. Uh, it also, you know, it's a complete process and how someone uses your product and so on. And if someone has a very good experience using your product, they're more likely to come back to you again or recommend it, recommend your website to other friends and so on. The problem with most businesses today is that uh, if if I ask them, you know, do you have a social media strategy, the answer is saying yes, we do social media. Okay. Now the thing is that it's not about whether you do social media or not it's about how well you do it because just by having a Facebook page a Twitter account a YouTube account doesn't mean that you're active on social media they're just tools and they're just platforms you need to think about how would you convince someone to recommend your business online because the moment you start promoting yourself you're not going to get the right kind of people to your website you want your customers to go out of the way to recommend your business and that's going to send you the, the quality traffic that you're after. So whether you like it or not you will get into you know, some kind of social media activity while you're optimizing your website. Okay so if you look at, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, using your keywords, you know, I mean, you've got to make sure that you're not stuffing your keywords. Make sure that, you know, you've got a decent headline or heading which tells what the page is all about. Make sure that you've created a theme around what you do. So if this particular page is talking about chocolate donuts, it's not repeating the word chocolate donuts 20 times. It's talking about everything around chocolate donuts, chocolate donuts. So you are spreading the theme of those keywords across your website. Okay. If you are uploading an image on your website, okay, that image also talks about cho chocolate don donuts. Same as your website URL. So if your domain name is you know marysbakery.com that page on chocolate don uh, donuts will be uh, marysbakery.com forward slash chocolate hyphen donuts because everything you put on that URL helps Google understand your page better one of the other thing is I was talking about was uh, keyword research now most people, you know, do a keyword strategy and say, okay, I want to be found on the first page of Google for these five keywords. Now, that's great, you know, it used to work, you know, two, three years back. But now what you've got to make sure is that uh, the kind of people who go to a blog are different from the kind of people who go to a website or go to a social media site. So that means you need to work on keywords based on what platform you're trying to target. Okay, so someone looking at social media sites, you know, would be typing in different keywords has some compared to someone actually going onto a website or going onto Google or doing a research on blog. So make sure that your keyword strategy is not common across all the platforms. And that goes to also with, you know, when you do your normal keyword research. Now, most people when they do keyword research, I'm pretty sure all of you all is you would use you would go to something like the Google external keyword tool and put in keywords and find out what people are searching for. Now that tool is good, but it's not accurate because what you need to understand is that the keywords that people type uh, on Google and click on organic results are different from the keywords that people type and click on sponsored list, uh, results. So when you do keyword research, you need to break it down to depending upon whether you're doing Google AdWords or you're trying to rank organically because the the searches done on them are totally different. So are the search volumes and so on. So in some industries, you know, Google AdWords works better in conversions than the 
organic SEO, or the organic results. In some industries, the organic results work better than the sponsored listing. But you need to understand that, especially if you are you're selling a product or a service. What normally happens is that when people are in a buying mode, they're more likely uh, to be looking out for either a brand or a price, you know, or some kind of unique features in terms of, you know, a quick delivery, a free delivery, or 24 by 7 support. Now, all that information is something which you can easily display on a AdWords, on a Google Ad, on a sponsored listing as compared to an organic listing. So I think uh, when you do your keyword research, you got to go one step back and say, OK, you know, um, what is my objective? My objective is either to sell products online or make my phone rings or get people to fill up my inquiry form. The next thing you to go and find out, OK, you know, people within my industry or the, the potential customers, you know, what percentage of them might click on sponsored listing, how many of them would click on organic listing. If you're looking at organic listing, what are the keywords they actually click or, you know, type when they're doing a search on Google and clicking on organic listing. So keyword research is actually become a bit more complex than what it used to be three, four years back. Three, four years back or even two years back, you can simply go to the Google AdWords tool and it'll give you information. But today the information is not really accurate. There are a couple of tools that you can do these keyword research. Some of them are free, some you got to pay for. But if you want you know, information like this, then these are paid tools where you have to you know, buy a subscription from these keyword research companies. What also is important is that uh, a lot of businesses tend to forget the importance of having good quality information on the website. You know, um, Most people today are impatient and not only that, a lot of us use a handle device to search the internet. So if you, if you look at what Google had to say, you know, Google said that there are more people today searching on Google using their mobile device, mainly because when you go out for lunch between 12 to 2 or 12 to 1, you're away from your desk, but you have your handle device with you. And you're more likely to do research while you're waiting for your food to come or you're waiting for your friend to meet up or whatever it is. So imagine if you're using a, 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 a iPhone or a, you know an Android phone. How much of patience would you have to read through a lot of information? So whatever you see in the screen, if it's not attractive enough, you hit the back button. So a couple of factors that really are adding value. One is the the load time of your website. You know you would see yourself that if you're using an uh, an iPhone. If a specific website is taking a long time to load up, you're more likely to hit the back button and go somewhere else because we are becoming extremely impatient. The same thing goes with you know uh, with quality content. You have to make sure that the information is going to add value to a person coming onto the website because if it doesn't, they're going to walk out and they're not going to come back ever again. And a good thing to do is that when you actually are putting stuff on your website, you know, uh, it's a good thing to ask your customers or people whom you know. So if someone buys a product from you, it's a good thing to ask them what made them buy the product, or you know, if was there some specific information that they found which helped them to take a decision. So it's really important to understand, you know, what are people really want to read or what information they after. Because a lot of times, as business owners, we simply will go and put in our product functions and features, which no one really wants to know. They want to know whether the service or the product that you offer, will it meet their requirements, or are you the best solution for them? What also is important is to track your popularity. Now, your popularity can be tracked on various uh, different options. You know, it'll look at in terms of uh, how many backlinks do you have from other websites. Um, you know, how many Facebook likes you have, how many tweets you have, how, how many you know uh, Facebook shares have happened. Because this will give you a better understanding as to how popular you are offline. 
See, whatever you do on your website, you know, Google knows that it's always going to be positive. And that's why anything that's external to your website, those factors are today adding more value. Because that's something which you're not, you know, in, which is not within your control. You know, so and that's why social media is becoming popular. The biggest reason social media has become popular is because it's practically freedom of speech. You look at a website, you know, if you go to someone's website, uh, you, can, you can see only information, you can't do anything, you know. So even if you don't like something over the website, I mean, very unlikely you're going to sit down and write an email to them and saying, I don't agree with you. Then we went on to setting up blogs. The good thing about blogs is that it allows your customers to interact with you. But again, that is restricted. If someone talks something negative about your website on your blog, you have an option of saying, I don't want that comment to be published. So that's where, you know, from blogs, people started moving on to social media, where social media, there's absolutely no censorship. Okay, but having said that, <clears throat> you can't simply go and talk negative about everyone. Because when you go and express yourself, uh, you're, you're measured based on how popular you are. So if someone does a tweet, what they were looked at is, okay, how many followers does this person have? Or, you know, what kind of authority does this person have and so on. Based on that, you will take that tweet seriously or not. So if, if, you, if you've not looked at your links or, or backlinks, you have to make sure that you do that on a regular basis. Now, some of the tools that you should consider is uh, for your keyword research, we talked about uh, Google AdWords keyword tool. Now, that is OK. Uh, however, uh, SEM Rush is a very good keyword tool, which allows you to tell, which tells you exactly uh, how much of traffic comes from organic results, how much, how much of them comes from sponsored listing. It also tells you what keywords, you know, your um, people within your industry are bidding for. It also shows you ads. So if you put in your competitor's domain name, it will show all the keywords that they're optimized for. It will also show you all the keywords that they're trying to sponsor on Google AdWords. It will also show you all the keywords or all the ads that are running at the moment. So it's a good way of uh, looking into competition and trying to find out what works for them, what doesn't work for them. It also gives you an understanding as to what is the approximate cost per click for some of those keywords. And a lot of times, you know, it's important to find out some of the keywords that you might be missing out on. And using a proper keyword research tool like SEM Rush or Word Tracker, you can actually get some good quality keywords to be added to your strategy. One of the other things to do is to look at, um, uh, you know, on what's happening on your uh, on your website in terms of, you know. Um, on-page optimization. Now, they're practically around 250 different factors. So if you don't want to go with an SEO company or you want to do optimization on your own, then there are quite a lot of optimizer reports that can give you an in-depth analysis of what's wrong on your website. Like Net Registry has got one where uh, I think we charge $60 to give you a 60-page report about what's wrong with your website. So it'll go through your entire website, tell you what is wrong from a usability point of view, from an, uh, you know, a technical point of view, from a strategy point of view, from how, how many clicks does it take for someone to reach you. So that report will tell you what are the things that you need to fix on your website. The next thing is that if you're using a blog, then there's a lot of blog comment management tools that are there which will help you manage your blog better so that you get a lot of traffic from your blog. Then you can do link tracking like the one I showed you earlier, the Open Explorer. It's a good way to find out exactly how many backlinks are coming onto your website. One of the other things to do with uh, social media is to do social media monitoring. Is to say, you know, uh, what people are talking about yourself or your brand or the the products that you deal with on the social media platform. Uh, if you want to be um, successful on social media, you, you need to be proactive or you need to uh, be able to solve people's problems. So if someone, let's say, you're dealing with um, 
like you know web hosting you know this is what we do if someone has some company has a problem with web hosting or if a client says I don't know what to do with it we actually go in and we try to help the customer so we don't to sell them a product but we help them solve the problem so we use that platform to go and reach out to people and say we can help you solve your problem and so on so then you go to you can use social management tools a lot of them are there which allow you to have a single dashboard to manage everything that you do on Facebook Twitter uh, blogs and so on you also can look at things like uh, social mention which is again a social search every time someone talks about your business your competition you know you will come to know you can use things like Google Al alerts as well if you want to then the other thing also is about a you know <clears throat> any kind of engagement that you do online on a social media platform you would like to know whether does it have a positive impact or does it have a negative impact so now some of these factors are based on social media but uh, it is kind of you know merging together so social media used to stand on its own but today uh, they kind of you know work together hand in hand I myself you know used to stay away from social media but then I realized I have to change because the market is changing you know so <clears throat> if you look at you know I mean the old school thought about doing SEO cannot really be on its own so it's just not about you know doing link building you have to look at everything in terms of uh, you know how do you do your social media promotion you know uh, Google Maps for example is again a part of social media activity you know uh, doing uh, looking at reputation tracking again is important you know to your your brand to your business and so on so slowly the concept of an SEO consultant is moving away from being more of an you know online marketing strategy what also is adding a lot of value today is uh, YouTube and video optimization uh, um, you'll be surprised that uh, today uh, YouTube is the second busiest search engine so the traffic that goes to YouTube is practically uh, you know after google.com.au or google.com youtube.com is the most popular website uh, the amount of time an average uh, web visitor spends looking at videos has increased drastically and uh, you will realize that even today in search engines you'll see a lot of uh, YouTube results coming up if you have um, and it's just not about putting YouTube um, you know putting videos on YouTube uh, you can set up a YouTube channel but it's also great to have videos <clears throat> on your website now there are different kinds of videos you can have you can have videos which are pre-sale uh, talking about how to use a product you can have videos about your product demonstration you can have videos about uh, testimonials from customers for some reason uh, you know nowadays <clears throat> people like to you know watch videos rather than you know sit and and read a long testimonial so as a part of your online marketing strategy you have to look at video optimization and it's becoming more and more important and again with you know putting up videos uh, there are different ways to optimize your videos you know ability for people to share the videos like your video all that actually adds up again YouTube is a social media platform you know so any traffic from YouTube back to your website is a great reference the next thing uh, from a search engine point of view important is the mobile search now the mobile search trends are increasing drastically um, more and more people are actually um, looking at uh, you know let's say you go shopping you walk into a shopping center you walk into a store um, you're gonna have um, you know you might go onto your handle device and say let me you know read about this product and this is what happens today you know imagine you walk into a retail store which has got 50 products now if you go to the salesperson and ask the salesperson which product should you buy you may not get the best answer because the salesperson might say something that's going to benefit him or his organization okay now you can take a decision on the spot so what most people used to do is they would have a look at it and 
they would go back home, do their research, and maybe next day come back and make a purchase. But moving forward, what's going to happen is thanks to social media, you would not need to do that. Every product would have a barcode or something like that. You simply can, you know, or a QR code, you can simply scan that thing on your handle device. And within a minute, you'll come, you'll get around 100 reviews about that product. What's also interesting is that out of that 100 reviews, you might find that 14 of your friends have used the same product. So you're more likely to trust your friend than the, the company that's trying to sell it to you. And I think that's where mobile search is getting more and more popular. So not only, you know, your results need to be optimized, your, pa your web pages need to be optimized, but also you need to look at product reviews and so on. If someone has got a positive, you know, experience with your product, it's a great thing to encourage them to recommend your product or at least rate your product. And I think that's that's the way things are moving across too. And um, you know, some of the trends, like from Google, you know, some of the information that's come up, it talks about, you know, the amount of usage of smartphones that happen when people are, you know, in the store itself. Okay, so a lot of times, and the great thing is that <clears throat> when when someone does a search on their mobile phone, you know, the the percentage of conversions are much much higher. You know, so if you look at it. If 95% of people looked out for local information, 88% of them took an action on the same day. That's the power of being found on mobile devices, website being mobile friendly, at the same time coming up on those mobile results. So you got to test whether your your website is mobile friendly or not, and also uh, you know you have to look at if you're looking at if you're a uh, location-based business, then local SEO is really important for your business. And um, so if you just having a Google Maps listing now nowadays is not enough, you need to find a way of optimizing it. You got to find a way of getting people to review your um, or rank your service or your product and so on. So um, if you look at today's results, you know, there are a lot of things we do online. Even though, you know, uh, search has always been a key factor, what you'll realize from this uh, stats out here is that, um, you know, people going on to social uh, media uh, sites are increasing drastically. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a massive growth with uh, social network sites. So <clears throat> apart from optimizing your website for your keywords, your search engines, you have to look at how do you drive traffic from those platforms. So if you look at search, you know, search is, you know, it's not, it's nothing great today. I mean, you know, even if you come on the first page of Google, it doesn't mean that, you know, you've going to make a lot of money or you're going to get a lot of inquiries. So um, getting a click out of search results is only an initial step. A lot of things happen beyond that, you know. So it doesn't just stop out there. So just because you're on the first page of Google doesn't mean that you're going to get a lot of business. You've got to understand that now uh, when a customer goes onto your website, they are into different stages. So some people start their uh, their process by you know, researching a product, doing a bit of a discovery, trying to find out whether does it meet my product or not. Then they start seeing, you know, is this something which is really worthwhile. So uh, just, you know, having the information and driving people to your home page is not going to do the job. You got to have all those other factors adding on value into it. Imagine if you go to a website and you realize that a lot of people, you know, on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook have recommended that business. You're more likely to take that uh, search result a little bit more seriously than without having all those informations. I think um, we ourselves, uh, you know, as human beings, are practically social animals, so we like social media. So when social media was picking up, we literally got adapted to it much more faster than all the other platforms. And that's why today, you know, Twitter, Facebook is so popular. It's because we love to share information uh, and it's all about, you know, the new word of mouth.
I'm pretty sure most of you all um, use Google Analytics. So when you go to Google Analytics, what you tend to look at is, okay, you know, how much of traffic comes from search engines, how much of traffic comes from direct searches. But, but what we don't look at and which you should look at is the actual traffic that doesn't come from search engines and doesn't come from someone actually typing in your domain name. That That is what we call as referring sites. Now that is where you know a lot of traffic or quality inquiries can come through. Now those referring sites are not just other websites but they mainly come from other platforms like Twitter, Facebook, blog, you know feed readers and so on. So that is almost you know a, a large percentage of traffic which you don't know where it's coming from but imagine if 50 percent of your traffic is coming from referring sites there's a lot you got to do to make sure that they convert better so rather than spending all your efforts trying to focus purely just on you know uh, Google AdWords or pure SEO think about how do you get you know value out of those referring sites because that's what's happening so you know whatever you get <clears throat> So from a website, you know, what do you think should be important, you know? Uh, apart from having, you know, good content, you got to look at, you know, do you have your option for people to uh, interact? See, m most of your customers may like to use Facebook or they are so, so much on Facebook. If you do not have an option where they can recommend your business on Facebook, that's a lost opportunity. Okay, and um, there are very few people who don't use Facebook nowadays. Almost everyone uses Facebook. The only thing is that it depends upon how much of time they spend on it. So either it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. If these platforms are, you know, signals or ways of reaching out, you got to make sure that your website gives them that option. Uh, you need to make sure that you, there is a platform for customers to interact with you, and that's that's what is going to make a lot of difference to your business. And why you should bother? You look at the amount of traffic or the amount of users most of these platforms have. That's the amazing amount of uh, uh, users on that platform. If you had to reach to those kind of people, you know, uh, by other traditional way of marketing, it's going to cost you a lot and a lot of money. Whereas if you use the right, you know, um, approach, you can get a lot of free traffic from these platforms. And there are different ways to look at it, you know. It's just not always about, you know, doing one one kind of marketing activity and leaving it across, you know. There are different activities that would contribute to the actual sale itself. So it's just not, you know, a lot of times people do uh, videos, you know. It could be a funny video. It could, the video that can actually go viral and so on. So there's a lot of things that you can do to add value. And... Uh, <clears throat> Adding those, you know, like doing webinars, doing seminars, uh, doing product demos, and all those things, they simply add value uh, for a customer experience, and that's what really matters today. We, we so used to trusting our friends and family is that uh, social media is actually doing that for you. So that's why, you know, if you do not uh, go through the entire process you're going to lose out on it so it's just not getting people onto your website you got to make sure that you're giving them enough reason you're giving <coughs> giving them an option to see why other people like your business and so on and I think when you put all those factors together you know uh, you bet you'll get a better conversion it's not the quantity of people coming to your website it's a quality of people that's going to matter but if the quality of people coming to your website rely a lot on some of those other platforms, you simply can't ignore it. And <clears throat> you have to make sure that you know you get a lot of reviews for your products and all that. Because if you're into the um, hotel or the accommodation industry. When when you look at an accommodation, most people actually go and look at reviews of a specific apartment or a property. Okay, you you likely to uh, take a decision based on reviews than actually what the hotel owner has to put about it. So it's getting more and more important whether you like it or not. You know that the entire social media 
you know plugging into search results again if you if you run a blog you know a blog can add a lot of value it will it is all about you know linking all the other activities you do together along to a blog so whether you're doing twitter whether you're doing linkedin whether you're on facebook you know um, everything will add back and that drives traffic to your website you got to make sure that uh, people can react with you you know it has to be a two way street but if you just have a single website and information on it you just you know pushing information down you're not letting people react with your business and the way people shop online has changed you know not only have we gone online you know we've we've kind of going away from retail shopping to online shopping but even the online shopping is getting more and more complex it's not as simple as going to an online store and saying yes i'll buy this product we we tend to look at various things we look at you know is there a rating for this product or a service um you know what do others have to say about it you know how popular is it on you know on Twitter and so on. So all those things are adding value onto it. And I think that's where um, you know social media is actually contributing to the organic part of it. So you have to change yourself if you're not doing it right, especially about saying I'm doing social media or rather being social, you know taking initiatives looking at marketing strategies looking at how you can you know add another 10 or 20 loyal customers or 20 people who would like to share your company information or whatever it is there are some companies um, out here which actually restrict their staff from using facebook during office hours now which kind of you know makes sense because you don't want them to um, you know spend time on facebook and so on but look at the the opportunity lost if you are if you have a call center and you have an agent who gets a compliment from one of the customer that agent might go on to facebook and say to 50 other people about what a great compliment they got and then that just keeps on adding up and saying you know what is this company all about so there's a lot of way of getting indirect traffic onto your website if you actually do social media the right way I might just run a couple of minutes overboard to the time that I'm supposed to finish off on, but you know, if you look at it, social you know can spread a message much more quicker than any other platform. And um, believe it or not, uh, today social media has got a huge influence on search results. There are a couple of videos within YouTube, you know, which actually are within the Google channel itself, which talks, talks about how Google is giving importance to these social signals. So the things that you really have to look at is, you know, think about using video content on your website. Look at how you can make the information on your website much more useful to your customers so that they not only benefit, but they also share that with other people. Okay. Look at using social networks to personalize your ranking so that you're using you know Facebook, Twitter and so on. Okay, look at uh, you know how you can reach out to more people without really spending a lot of money on sponsored listings and so on. So there's a, there's a lot of activities that you can do around it. So the thing about search engine optimization is that it's it's changed a lot. It's not about the things that you do on page, it's more about the things that you're doing off page that's going to add value because there's only so much you can do on page anyway you know you at the most you can keep changing your keywords uh, you know adding a couple of more uh, you know links and so on but whatever you do off off page is actually going to benefit your uh, on page optimization as well So when you do an SEO checklist, you got to look at you know having these couple of strategies in place. One is to look at your content, your, your quality of your content. If you feel that the quality of your information is not good, it'll be a great thing to hire a copywriter who could put that in better words. Um, think about a blog strategy. You know, if you don't have one, because if people are going to buy a product and service from you because of your knowledge about the industry, you must have a blog look at a social strategy think about how you can use social media to 
benefit your business. Look at a video strategy. You know, look at what and how you can use video for your business in terms on your website, on social media. Re uh, reputation management is picking up. You've got to find a way of how you can get uh, you know, people to recommend your business or what do your customers think about your, your business, your service and so on. And most importantly, you know, uh, look at uh, social media monitoring. Look at what's happening on the social media platform with regards to your industry, your business, your competition and so on. So <clears throat> I know the last 60 minutes was a lot of information sent across to you guys but uh, the bottom line is that uh, you know SEO is not as simple as it was it used to be you know in the past uh, it is kind of getting more and more uh, complex there's a lot of players in the market uh, you know if you if you're not doing you're not spending much time doing optimizing your website there are others who are going to benefit from it and you're just going to lose it so you've got to take yourself you know into consideration and say how much of your business depends upon your website if 60 percent of your business depends upon your online inquiries you cannot ignore your optimization program you have to either uh, you know take time and spend time doing it yourself or get someone within your organization to um, help you with um, doing the optimization or if you do not have the time and the resources then it's time that you actually employ someone else to do it for you because <clears throat> the the buying patterns has changed customers you know choose to go online and shop and there are so many factors that people look at today before they just buy the product price is not the only factor price in you know, a price used to be the only factor but now there's so many other factors there are product reviews there are recommendations uh, there are uh, you know product opinions all that add a value onto it so it's really important you know what you can do for your business now if you need a copy of the presentation you know feel free to send me an email uh, I can send you a copy of the presentation if you have your own business and you would like to have um, some good information about your website or you would like to have some guidance about what you know someone like net registry can do for your business feel free to give me a call I'm happy to help you and this is one last thing I just want to ask all of you all in the room is uh, this is what uh, a marketing team wanted to know is a quick question before you guys leave is if I just like to I mean there are close to around 27 or 28 people in the webinar right now I just want to ask is if if we plan to do a full day workshop where we actually go through the entire process and explain to you how you would do you know do you think you know you guys would be interested because a lot of times I do these webinars customers come back and say uh, you know it's great the information is great but I need someone to show me how to do keyword research or how to look at my website or where do I put my keywords so one of the things that uh, as a company we were looking at is you know would it be worthwhile to do a one day workshop um, wherein we can get you know a lot of people to come and um, you know sit across open up their websites look into the individual websites and tell them how to go about optimizing their website so it could be a one day of investment you know and a couple of dollars of investment but then uh, the information that you will take home you know will help you do the process moving forward on their own and uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to send me an email and I'm happy to respond back to it uh, thank you very much for spending your time and uh, hopefully we'll see you later again thank you very much